Rebecca Hilburn, and I'm doing another marker and paper compatibility test. And today I'm doing water-based markers, specifically Zig Art and Graphic Twin and Zig Brushables on tracing paper. Now, tracing paper might seem like a weird choice for a compatibility test. I mean, it's thin, we tend to think of it as kind of disposable, but I've used tracing paper with Copic markers in the past, and I really like how Copics lay on tracing paper, and I wanted to see if um, I could get similar results with water-based markers, because I really like water-based markers. I really like alcohol markers as well, but I think water-based markers are a great introduction to markers, they're affordable, they're non-toxic, they come in a variety of colors, they can be blended in a few ways, um, they tend to be cheaper than alcohol markers, which is always important. And if you have a studio where young people run in and out all the time, they are a great thing to work with together because they're non-toxic and they're cheaper. Um, so, you know, I'm a big fan of water-based markers and I'd really like to see them become more popular, especially among uh, illustrators, because there's a lot that you can do with them. I recently did a water-based water marker test on vellum and it turned out, I think, great. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn, I like it. I think it turned out well. So I wanted to see if tracing paper, which tends to be cheaper than vellum and thinner than vellum and doesn't have the nice coated surface of vellum, I wanted to see if tracing paper could perform in a similar way. You probably can't layer it as much. There's probably a possibility of it soaking through, but I think tracing paper is a very accessible thing. I think you can even get it at Walmart. So, so and I also think um, you can sometimes get Zig stuff at Walmart through the EK Tools line because that's a Zig distributor. So, um... I'm getting like all ahead of myself. But wanted to see how it worked. So I have this cute illustration of Kara. I've got some Swedish embroidery going on in the back because I really love the sort of patterns and interplay and I used to do embroidery. So it's like a cool way for me to, to recognize things I love in one piece, right? So Kara is the seven inch tall main character from my comic series, Seven Inch Kara. It's a watercolor comic aimed at little kids. I would super appreciate it if you checked it out, especially if you love my art. Um, if you purchase a copy of volume one, that totally goes to supporting me and what I do here and what I do at conventions and making more comics. It is kid friendly, kid safe, got a young female main character who doesn't tote a gun and doesn't use violence to solve her problems. So if you're looking for an alternative to the sort of comics that are out there for kids these days, Seven Inch Kara is the way to go. And I'll quit yammering and I'll get started. So I'm starting with her skin and I'm using Fawn. Um, and so far it's going down okay. Um, I might try to do a more open sort of coloring style where I actually leave the white of the paper as part of the illustration. It does seem darker on this paper than it did on the vellum. It might be soaking in a little bit more. Let's see if we can blend it with um, the Tombow ABT, which is like my go-to blending marker. It does seem to blend out on the Tombow ABT, so I'm gonna blend that skin tone a little bit more into the rest of the piece. So that's what we've got so far. And if it's a little hard to see, I'll zoom in for you. Doo doo. You could probably even do tip to tip blending. Let me make sure my marker is clean. Because it seems like it's putting some gray schmutz down. Always keep scratch, pa scratch paper handy. So the nice thing about this method of rendering is you don't have to worry about ink and marker compatibility. That's kind of why I'm doing it this way. I want to limit the number of variables. Seems to layer very nicely. Uh, I am kind of concerned because it is buckling a little bit. 
which is okay, but this is the the less... These are the drier of the two markers I'm going to be using today. So there is a good chance of, um, like, severe paper warpage. Let's see if we're bleeding through any. No, not yet. But I probably shouldn't do... I shouldn't work while it's still wet, if that makes sense. I should let it dry and then do another layer. Because that, with water-based markers, that's how you get bleed through, is uh, when you push the markers to layer on top of each other, saturating the paper this way. Or that way, I'm sorry. Because um, alcohol markers, the way they work, is the alcohol solution, if you put like a blender on top of it, or more layers, it pushes those markers further and further back the colors you've already applied further and further back onto the page. Oh yeah, that works well. This also picks up color, so you know you can better distribute it. Oh, I just, I just get excited about markers. I'm sorry. I love markers and I love watercolors. So I haven't done, and I don't necessarily plan on doing any um, ink compatibilities in terms of like stamping or uh, inking, like like ink pen, inking utensil, inking. <laughs> I don't plan on necessarily doing any of those kind of things on these papers. What you can do, though, is you can uh, after the ink, after the marker has dried out dried completely you can go over it again and ink on top of that if that's a thing that interests you i know for some people that's not really a solution it's not good enough i apologize so on this paper it does the prior layers do get picked up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be patient and let it dry and then apply additional layers. So I just looked up and I found out I'd paused myself and I have no idea where I paused. I'm trying to think about what color the pom-pom should be. Probably that horrible red. Although that bag is already pretty bright. And right now the bag is a point of contrast with the red kind of circling it. It almost looks on purpose instead of like Becca's lazy. Didn't think things through. I'm gonna have to leave those pom-poms for last. Even a green. We'll see. Do you guys ever, I mean, you probably haven't realized it yet, but I, I want you to just think for like a minute. I'm doing a bunch of paper tests. I am testing uh, at least two types of marker on each paper, water-based and alcohol-based. So I've already done, and I haven't, um, Vellum's the only one I've done both on, so that's two. Copic PM Pad has one on it. Windsor & Newton paper has one on it. Four. It's, it's just gonna end up being like a lot of art assets. Which is fine, I'm not complaining. Just... Like, sometimes I, because I can never really think about the assets I create for the blog or for reviews. I never really think about them as assets. I mean, I have a folder where I chunk all my scans uh, for volume two in case I need, like, you know, I'm, I'm, if I'm trying to hit, like, like I, have, I have a double page spread, for example, and those have to be on facing pages. So sometimes you need to to pad the book a little bit, have like some additional illustrations. Um, and it's just easier if they're ready made. And I also like my um, my section headings to have art on them. And when I did volume one, I had to make all this art 
kind of last minute because I was like trying to get the book out by Mocha Fest. Um, it's just hard. It's hard to do that. And I enjoyed the challenge. I'm one of those people. <laughs> if life isn't hard enough, I make it hard. Sometimes I, I just actively seek mini challenges, I guess. Um, but the point was I, I had to create all this additional art. And so part of when I do marker tests or when I do uh, any sort of a product test is I try to make something Kara ish so that I can use it in the book. You know, like it sucks to make a bunch of art you can't, can't use. I wish I had a yellow. That I don't have. I do not have. I guess I could use this green though, like a yellow. Anyway, I just I just end up making like so so much stuff between the blog and the YouTube videos and then my the book itself and then freelance. But it always feels like I don't have anything. Like when I'm doing cons, like I always have to generate a bunch of new fan art stuff because that's that's what does sell, sadly. I mean, you know. Like this, you know, just no. It's not an established webcomic property. Heck, it's not even a web comic yet. It's a print comic and I'm waiting till the whole thing is done and then I'm gonna make it a web comic. Um But I think I will do that red. You know, just generate a lot of a lot of stuff and I mean it's a it'll you'll improve you know your mastery of materials will increase you'll learn new things you'll find better materials and better paper but then you're also gonna make a bunch of stuff you can't use because it didn't turn out very well I don't know I think about this kind of stuff as mistress of my own destiny. You do want to clean markers if you're blending them with water base. You do want to clean them on a clean sheet of paper because it's going to pick up that color. And I never let it sit, so I can't tell you if it's going to ruin your marker or not. But it, you know, it will affect other applications you do, so. You don't want to just leave it, and it'll probably stain the tip. But fortunately, we're almost done. I just need to let some stuff dry. Okay, so we're in the stretch. Pretty much just adding details to the pom-poms, and then adding, like, a, a little bit of shadow underneath everything. So, that's the pom-poms. Now, if you want to, you can blend this shadow out using the Tombow ABT. It works on this paper. You don't have to, but it's an option, especially where your color is getting a little intense. You can blend it out like that. Of course, it seems like once it's dry, that is where it's going to be. But it, with a little scrubbing, it looks like you can reactivate it. Just for some softer transitions. And of course, you could go back in if you wanted and tighten that up. Add a little more definition. bit of shadow where Kara overlaps objects just to sort of add a little bit of three-dimensionality to it so it's not I and mean, it's intent it's intended to be kind of a flat design but you know very careful shadows because I don't want it to get muddy or kind of clunky which is what will happen if you're not careful in 
And believe me, that happens to me plenty. So I know all about it. Now these are the stitches that really benefit from that little bit of a drop shadow. Of course, when you blend it, you have to be careful because it can smear other colors around it. I think, I think, I think, I think this is done. Um, this was water-based marker on tracing paper. Didn't bleed through. You can still see the line art underneath, which is what I wanted. Um, tracing paper is very affordable. It's pretty ubiquitous. You can get it almost anywhere. The water-based markers I used are not quite so easy to find. Um, you can find them online. You can find them on Amazon. You should check the description. I'll provide links. Um, but you may have trouble finding them in your brick and mortar. Uh, art store. I have not yet tried Tombow ABT markers on vellum or on tracing paper. I can probably do a little mini video on that and we can see if they handle in the same, they handle the same. Uh, if you guys would like to see that, this is a prior render I did of um, those same water-based markers on vellum. So it does seem like the vellum gives a higher quality illustration, but the tracing paper is still fun to use and it's receptive to water-based markers. I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you guys found that paper test useful. If you did, please leave a like. Please um, consider leaving a comment. Um, consider contacting companies on my behalf and showing them my good work if you really enjoy it. Make sure you share, share it with your friends and please consider subscribing to my channel for even more great content like this. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you again soon. Bye.